Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel and in today's video I'll show you how to sync your email on your phone, your tablet, and your computer even if you don't want to change your email address. So most people have all of their emails all synced up between their devices since most providers offer IMAP mail service now but some still only op offer POP3, and that means that when you read and delete a message on your phone, you still have to go and do the same thing on your computer. And then again, if you have a third device like a tablet, it's hard to keep up with it, and you end up with out of control inboxes and no idea what has been dealt with and what hasn't. In addition, if you save an email on one device, you can only retrieve it from that device. It's annoying. The problem is that a lot of people have had their email address for 10 plus years. It would be a big pain in the rear to have to change their email address with all of their contacts and all of their vendors. So here's a solution for you to switch over to all of the benefits of IMAP email without having to change your email address. Okay, first let me do a quick explainer on IMAP versus POP3. So these are both email protocols, which is just a set of rules that the, that the email server uses. The main difference between IMAP and POP3 for our purposes is how they deliver mail from the server. So POP3 receives your mail and then, depending on how many devices are asking for it, will send it out and then it deletes it off of its server. So now you have a copy on your devices, but the devices aren't talking to each other. And since there's no central storage, when you delete a message on one device, you have to repeat that process on all of your devices. So IMAP doesn't deliver your mail so much as it mirrors an entire copy of your mailbox to each of your devices. So that includes your inbox, but it also can include all of your sent files, your trash, and any saved folders that you have. Anytime you make a change in one place, like delete a message, it communicates back with a central server, and then it makes that change on all of your devices. So I suppose there might be a situation where POP3 is better, but if you have one, more than one device where you're accessing your email, you have to use IMAP. Now here's the problem. Not all providers offer IMAP, particularly regional service providers who don't have the most up-to-date service. So what if you've been using the same email address for 10 years, you don't want to change it, but you're sick and tired of deleting emails from multiple devices? I have a solution for you. I set this up for a bunch of people, including my mom and my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, who are all, were all facing that annoying problem. Here's what it is in a nutshell. You're gonna set up a new Gmail account. Don't worry, you don't have to change your email address to this. You're gonna have your current email provider forward everything to your Gmail account. And then you're gonna change the settings in your phone and your other devices to pull from the new Gmail account. Okay, let's walk through each step. Number one, set up Gmail address. So first you're gonna to need to create a Gmail account with Google if you don't already have one at mail.google.com. So choose create an account and then fill in all of this information. So even though you aren't gonna actively use this email address, try to pick a username that you might like. After all, you might decide at some point to switch email addresses and this would be a really easy transition. So make sure you record your new email address and your password somewhere. Next, forward all mail to this Gmail address. So now you need to log into your web account for your current email address. Almost every provider gives you a way to forward all of your mail to a new account. Because each provider has a different series of steps, I can't really walk you through your specific process, but I can walk through it using Comcast or Xfinity's mail account. It should be fairly similar for you. So you're gonna find the web address for your email service. If you don't know it, you should be able to do a quick Google search with the name of your email provider and the word webmail. So now log in using your credentials, navigate to email, and now you're gonna look for email settings. So in this case, it's this gear symbol up in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so now you're gonna to go to auto forward and you are going to enable it by checking the box and putting in your new Gmail address in the field for email destination. So you do not want to save a copy of forwarded emails unless you want a mailbox full of duplicates. So if you're having any problems doing this, you can call your customer service for your email provider and just ask them how to show you how to auto forward. Okay, next, add Gmail account to all portable devices. So now we're on the third step. You need to change all of your devices to pull email from the new Gmail address rather than your, in my case, Comcast address. So here's how you add a Gmail account on an iPhone. 
go to settings, then, uh, then down to accounts and passwords. Now choose to add an account and pick Google. So now you're gonna enter your new email address and password. So this is going to bring you to a screen where you can choose which kind of information that you want to share with your device. So for this purpose, we're just gonna turn on mail and we're gonna turn all the others off and hit save. Okay, so the next thing is to access Gmail accounts from your computer. So for your computer, many people still use Microsoft's Outlook software for email. You can certainly add this Gmail address to Outlook, but, and hear me out here, if you have regular access to broadband internet, I would highly suggest using Gmail's webmail service from a browser. So instead of a piece of software, it's really just a website, mail.google.com. It has a lot of the same functionality um, as Outlook does, but you don't have to deal with all the cumbersome issues that come with another piece of software, like delays and syncing issues. Plus, you don't have to do anything to add this account, you just have to log into the Gmail website. So if you're used to clicking on the Outlook icon to access your email, then make a shortcut icon that takes you directly to Gmail's website. So you can do that by copying the URL of the Gmail inbox, going to your desktop and right clicking, choosing new and then shortcut and paste in the website location. So I'm just gonna name this email and done. Okay, also, you can add Gmail to the shortcut bar on your browser. So here's how you do it in Chrome. So you're gonna right click anywhere on the shortcut bar, choose to add a page, okay, name it email, and paste in the URL, and there it is. Okay, the next step is to save old mail and delete your old account. So before you delete your old account from your phone, you may have a bunch of emails in your inbox or in saved folders that you want to keep. Remember, any email that you receive from now on will be forwarded to your new Gmail account, but anything that you received before it will not. So there are a couple of options here. You can migrate. Some email providers have a process that helps you migrate your email to another provider. Just a quick word of warning, unless you're a techie, this is probably not a great option. I've done this process for lots of people and I have never been able to get the migration to work properly. So let's talk about the next option, forward individually. So this is kind of a pain in the butt because it involves forwarding each individual email to your new Gmail address. It really depends on how many you wanna keep and how much energy you have. Or you could always archive. So what I mean by that is that you can just leave those old emails in your old account. You can always log into webmail for your old account to retrieve them or send them to your new account if you ever need to. Most people tend to do a combination of the last two options. They forward the most important individual emails and they leave the rest in their old account. Most of the time they never even really need to access them. So once you've figured out what to do with old emails, go ahead and delete your old accounts off your portable devices like phones and tablets and potentially off of your computer if you're not using it to archive email. So now every email that comes in addressed to your old email address will hit that server and be automatically forwarded to the new Gmail account. There's usually only a couple of seconds of delay. The Gmail account becomes your new repository for mail. You can create folders to save emails from your computer. You can do that from your phone too, but it's a little bit more complicated. And all of your folders, including your inbox, will be mirrored across all of your devices. So delete a message on your phone and it disappears from your computer. File a message on your iPad and retrieve it from that saved folder on your phone. You continue to use your current email address. No one ever needs to know or ever use your Gmail address. It's really just a pass-through address. So just let me know how this goes for you. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.